Hello, Miguel from Grumo here, and I'm going to show you how to create a movie app where you can save movie recommendations from your friends. And it's going to use the API from the movie database in order to allow you to do searches. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do everything with Glide without coding. Let's do it. So the first thing you need to do is to get an API key from the movie database. And for that, you can create an account at the moviedb.org and it's free. Once you do that, you can apply for the API key and then you can get it. In this case, this is my API key. Now there are many things you can search using the movie database. In this case, we're gonna be searching for movies only, but you could search for companies, collections, keywords, multi-search people, TV shows. Now, if you go to the API documentation and under search, you'll be able to see exactly how to structure the URL for a movie search, which is exactly like this. And then you would structure your URLs using your API key, and then you'll get a JSON object that you have to process using Glide in order to create the search results and add it to your Glide app. To test it, you can enter your API key and then your search, let's say the movie, well, all right. Okay, and then uh, we can copy this and paste it on our browser to see the result. And you get a JSON response with all the results that match your query. Now, how do we convert this into something that Glide can understand? Let's do that next. Go to your Glide account, click new project, and then give it a title and you can select either mobile or large screen, basically the same thing and uh, click continue. Then select uh, Glide tables and this is going to generate a default app and then we can start cleaning it up. If you go to uh, data, you can see that there is three tables. I usually put the users table on top and then we have a things table and a categories table, which uh, we can uh, delete because we're going to start from scratch, right? and delete. What I'm going to do is create a new table and it's going to be called uh, movies search or we're going to call it just simply search and it's going to have an input so a search input field of the type text and it's going to be user specific because each user is going to have their own searches. You don't want to be sharing a search with everybody and then we need to enter our URL, our API URL, and it's going to be of the type text as well. So it's going to be called the search API URL. And we can enter it here. Now this already has the API key and it also has a search on it. So what we want to do is change the URL here, so there's nothing under the search, right? And this is gonna be just called uh, search, because we're gonna replace that search with the search input field. And to do that, we use template column. So template column, and we're going to grab the search API URL and we're gonna replace the search value with the actual search input, all right? Again, if we copy this and paste it on a new tab, we should get a zero results because there's nothing in the search input. If we put here a different movie, let's say Star Wars, and we copy and paste this on a new tab, we can see all the results that match Star Wars. Now, how do we fetch that JSON from Glide? Well, luckily we have a fetch JSON column and we're gonna call it fetch JSON. And that's where we're going to store our JSON result object, right? If we just type JSON and fetch JSON, we can enter here our URL right, search URL, and the jQuery is which parameter inside that JSON object we want to grab. 
this scale we just want to grab all the results under the results parameter and to get there we just type dot results and we can see now that we're getting all the results in basically an array and now we have all the results from this specific search input now we can go to our layout and create the search screen so let me just delete this default screens and I'm going to create a new screen for from data it's going to be from the search table and I'm going to delete this component so we can start from scratch the first component is going to be a input field so a text entry and that's going to be saved into the search input already says Star Wars because that's what we have in our database here but if we delete it from here we will get nothing there okay and we can have a component here just a text component to display our results our JSON object which if we go here to text we can grab our fetch JSON there's nothing there but if I start typing things should start happening you see right so I can say star worse and you can see how very quickly we're getting the results from the movie database API of course this is unreadable so we need to convert each result into something that looks more like on the final app where if we type star worse there you go we see the actual results and then we have to add the ability to click on any result and add it to our database of movies. So let's do that next. To display the search results inside a list, we need to create another table, which is going to be called search results. And in this table, we're going to have as many rows as results that we want to grab from our JSON object. Let's say that we want to grab the first 10 results. So then we're going to have to have 10 rows. All right, and we're going to name the first column uh, the result ID and it's going to go from zero to nine because we need to start from zero since we're going to be then grabbing the values inside each result in the JSON object. And because we're going to treat that as an array, then arrays in programming start with zero. So I'm just going to say that's a number okay no groups separator and i'm going to enter zero zero one two three four five six seven eight and nine we need a second column where we grab the json object that we fetched and we pull it into a column here so we're going to call that the fetch json and we're going to grab it using the single value column the first from the first row of the search table and that's going to be the fetch json and we can see here that we've grabbed the fetch json and the next thing is that we have to grab from each result the parameters of each movie so we need to know which parameters are we getting back from the api from the movie database and you can look at them and you can see we have a parameter called adult, backdrop path, gender, IDs, original language, original title. So we probably want the original title, the overview and the poster path. And we have also vote count and vote average. What we can do if uh, we want to grab, figure out which are all the available parameters easily. We can actually ask uh, ChatGPT to clean this for us. So let's do that. Let's do that right now. Let's just grab these values and go to the new chat here and show which parameters this JSON has. And <clears throat> just press enter. There you go. We got. Adult, back to ground, da, da, da. original language. There you go. So the ones that we want to get are 
the ID, the ID, because if we search a movie again, we don't want to add it twice to the database, and this is a way to identify each movie independently. Then we need the original title overview and probably want the poster path and vote average. So let's start grabbing those parameters from our JSON object. Now the fastest and most efficient way I found to be able to grab each parameter from each result is by using the custom JavaScript column inside Glide. So let's call this the ID of the movie that we want to grab for each result. And then we're going to use the JavaScript computed column. And then you can enter three parameters that can either be hard coded or you can grab them from the, your actual column. So in this case, P1 is going to be the JSON object that we fetched with all the results. And P2 is going to have the result ID that goes from zero to nine, because we're going to use that to retrieve the corresponding result. So zero would be the first result and nine would be the 10th result from our result JSON object. Now the code here, I'm going to just copy and paste it. It's basically going to grab the JSON object and is going to parse it using the JavaScript parse function. And that allows us to access each result independently. So we're going to grab the first result, in this case, the result that comes from P2, right? The result ID. And then we're going to grab the parameter called ID. You can see how this already is working because it's grabbed the correct parameter here. Okay, and we can do that for all the other parameters that we want to grab. So let me do another example. The other one, the other parameter we want to grab is the original title. And if I go here and I duplicate this column and I call it original title, all I have to do is change the, this value to original title and see what happens. I'm grabbing the correct parameter that has the original title for the first 10 results. How awesome is that? Now let's do that for the other parameters that we want to grab, which is going to be the poster path. Duplicate, poster path, poster path. And I'm quickly going to do the other ones and then I'll come back. Now that we have all the results and all the parameters that we want, we can go to our layout and display them. Let me delete the fetch JSON text component and add a list component. And in this collection, the data is going to come from the search results. And the title is going to be the original title. Under the description, we can have maybe the release date. And for the image, we want to have the poster path. Now, under options, we can get rid of the search bar and we can disable the actions. And this is already working. Let me type another movie. Well, it's a great movie. And it's uh, working. Now, the problem is that the image is not displaying because if we go to the search results, we only have a relative path for the poster. We need a complete URL. And to get that, we can go to the uh, movie database documentation and just type image. And we can go to image here. And it basically says that we can retrieve different image sizes with the parameter, let's in this case, with 500, W500. So that seems good enough to me. And then the, the relative path that we retrieve from the JSON object is the rest of this URL, the last parameter. But what we need is the beginning, which we're missing. So we can go copy this and then we can create a template column right next to the poster path. And I'm going to add a column and it's going to be called poster URL, for example, 
template column and here I can paste the URL that we got and we're going to then enter a variable that we can replace with the actual image in this case image and that we're going to replace this with the poster path okay and that we can use now to grab the actual image and there you go the images are displaying correctly next thing we want to do is that when we click on one of the results we want to save this to our database of movies for that we need to first create a new table where we're going to store all the movies that we selected so let's create a new table call it movies now the data we want to save here it's pretty much the same values that we grab from our fetch json object so all of these id original title and poster path all right so i'm going to go ahead and create these values right so the id right and i'm going to do this really quickly and then come back great now we have all the columns that we wanted for our movies table and then we can create a custom action that when we click in any of the results it adds all that movies metadata into the movies table so to do that we select the collection and then we go under actions and then we go, go to enable advanced actions and then here we're going to create a custom action create new action and we're going to uh, give this uh, call this at movie and all we want to do is uh, configure the action and select at row under movies and here we're going to grab all the values that we got from our search result and put them in the corresponding columns inside our movies table so the original title release date overview poster url and the vote average and then we can what do we want to do after we add the movie it's probably redirect the user to that movie's detail page all right so we could go here and so detail screen of this item okay let's see if that works there we go and it's taking us to that specific results page the problem is that this is taking us to the detail page of that result row so in this case to any of these detail rows we want to be taken to the newly created row inside the movies table and for that we have to relate the search result with the corresponding new movie that we added we can delete this row by the way and the way we can do that is by using the id of the movie to create that relation between the search results and the movie table to do that we're going to add a new column and we're going to call this movie rel and it's going to be a relation type of column where we're going to grab the id of the movie and relate it under the movies to the id okay and right now there is no matches after we add the movie to our movies database this relation will exist and we can use this relation to redirect the user to the detail page of the newly added movie okay so we're gonna go to layout go back and their collection actions we're going to edit the action and we're going to show the detail screen not of this item but of the movie rail right and the target could be current which is the current screen right okay so let's do this close and let's click on the whale again and now we should be in the detail screen of the whale correct it's just now we have to design this page so it actually looks like more like this page 
right? So we have the all the metadata displayed nicely, okay? So let me just delete this and this. I'm gonna add a title, a simple title. Uh, the image is going to be the poster URL. And headline is gonna be large, rounded. The title is going to be the title of the movie. Under subtitle, we're going to have the release date, and then we can have a text component with the description, the overview, okay? And for the title of the page, we should have the original title, okay? Great, uh, we can test this with another movie, let's say Alien, and there you go, we're taking to the alien detail page. Now there's one problem here is that if I click again, look what happens in the database. We added twice the same movie. We want to detect if the movie exists before we add it. And if it exists, we'll just redirect to the existing movie instead of duplicating the movie, right? So let me just delete all of the results here. And to do that, when we go to the collection, we have to edit the action. By the way, now you can edit the actions right from the action step here. We only have one action. And what we're going to do is add a condition that checks if the relation doesn't exist. In other words, the movie was not added or already. So if it's empty, then we create a new movie and then we show the detailed screen for that movie. Another thing that we should do is also clear the search. So for that, all we have to do is set columns of this item and we cannot clear the results right from here. We will have to create a relation back to the search, which we can easily do. But before we do that, let me just show that in the case the movie exists, in other words, the relation is not empty, then we're going to show the detailed screen of not this item, but the related item target current and we would delete the search again uh, so let me just uh, this is done it automatically saves so if I try to add twice the same movie let's try to add it once here right so it's been added once if I try to add it again it takes me to the detail page but you see it's not, it hasn't been added twice this is great to avoid duplicates now, the next thing we want to do is to clear the search input value right after we added the new movie. And to do that, we need to relate or connect the search results to the search screen. And for to do that, we go to search results and we just can create a single column and single grab the first value of search and we're going we need to grab the whole row and when we do that and we go to actions and select our action we can add a new action we're, we're, we're going to set the values not of this item but of the search relation that we just created and here under search input we can select clear value and we're going to do that whether the movie doesn't exist or it exists. So I'm gonna do this again with set columns and the relation back to the search input. And we're going to clear that value, right? This is already saved. So as soon as I select or enter a new movie, let's say Clay Gladiator from 2000, and we go back we see how the search input has been cleared. Now we can see that there is a lot of results here, although we've cleared the search input. So what we can do is create a filter that only shows results if there is, well, if the ID is not empty, for example, right? And now we'll only be showing results when the ID is not empty. Because by default, there's uh, some data under search results, right? The poster URL is always there because we had to add, remember, a link to the actual URL, okay? So now we're only gonna display results if there is a value under the ID column. Great, 
So this is the main functionality. The last part to do is to create a page where we display all the movies that we saved. And to do that, we simply go click the plus button here and screen from data and movies. And we already can see how Glide has tried to create a page. We're going to select our collection. And then under image, we're going to grab the poster URL for the title is going to be the original title and the description is going to be uh, the release date. Now, if we add a new movie, you can do it from here, uh, clicking the plus button. So a trick uh, that you can use if you want to trigger, well, go to that page is basically go to collection under actions and then enable advanced actions. And the, for the plus button, instead of the show form screen, we could go to the tab called search, right? And this is going to take us to the search tab, right? It's as simple as that, really, because now if we type a new movie, like Gravity, for example, guess what? We're already taken to that movie. And we can clean the UI very easily by, right now we have two tabs here, search and movie. So we could just go to search and there under general, we can grab a search icon and under movies, we can grab, well, kind of like a video icon or something like that, right? There you go. So this is an overview of how to create an app to save your movies. If you want to grab a, the template, uh, the final template where you can also create custom lists and all of that, you can go to groomo.com slash movie app, and then you'll have access to all the goodies that make this app. But basically, this is how you can use Glide with the Fetch JSON column to create a really cool movie app for you. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.